Love must be with hip, without hypocrisy, <coughs> abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another with mutual love, showing eagerness in honoring one another. Do not lag in zeal, be enthusiastic in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, endure in suffering, persist in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be conceited. Do not repay one of anyone evil for evil. Consider what is good before all people. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. Do not avenge yourselves, dear friends, but give place to God's wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Rather, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. A title of today's message, love, God's Love Coming Through. We can do nothing. We are nothing without Jesus Christ. We love to try to be something. I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. Because apart, of, apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. As in John 15, I talked about that last week. The talents that God has blessed us with, do we use them in a way that glorifies him? Yeah, we can see people out there doing all kinds of wonderful things. They have great ability to do wonderful things. But they are not believers of Jesus Christ. There are people who attend church, have great talent in doing things to do in the church, but they do not live for Jesus. Oftentimes we try to accomplish things on our own without the input of the Holy Spirit. I can do this. This is something that's small. It's not going to amount to much. I can do it on my own. I don't need Jesus Christ. I don't need the Holy Spirit involved in this one. And then we wonder what went wrong. Why didn't this turn out the way I thought it should? The way I thought it could? Apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. It doesn't say just the big parts. It says nothing. And that includes the small things. It doesn't matter how small it is. Jesus doesn't need me to ask him to do the small things. It's just the big things he wants me to ask him. Say, hey, I need help with this one. He says, no. He's saying nothing. There's nothing you can accomplish without me. Then Jesus goes on to say that just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. This becomes our choice to stay in his love. It becomes our choice to say, hey God, Father God, 
I need help here. It becomes our choice to stay in, in a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we do, it becomes a desire to follow his commandments. John 15, verse 12, my commandment is this, to love one another just as I have loved you. Have you ever wondered just what does that mean? To love others as Jesus Christ loved me? Have you really thought into that? I'll touch on it a little bit. I'm not going to really get deep into that thought. Because that's, that's a whole new thing. What we're talking about here in chapter 12 is our conduct as a Christian. And how it relates to others. How does it affect us? What is our secret? Our conduct as a Christian can only be as good as our relationship with Jesus Christ. How close a friend is he? Do you talk to him every day? All day long? That little phrase he said, pray without ceasing? Praying without ceasing, it's not praying, it's just stopping, closing your eyes and holding your hands, just right. And saying something, oh dear Lord, Heavenly Father, our Father which art in heaven, how it be thy name. No, it's just talking to Him. How often do you talk to our Heavenly Father? I talk to Him, but He never talks back. How? The answer I was going to give on that one Open the Bible and listen. Love must be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. To be devoted to one another with mutual love, showing eagerness in honoring one another. Last week I talked about not thinking more highly of myself than I should. What is sensible. Do I look at myself and what do I see? Do I see Jesus in me? And just what is it that makes me think I am more than I really am? But then the flip side of that is, don't think less of yourself than you should. That is sensible. What makes you think when you look at Jesus Christ that you're less than you really are? When we look at ourselves through the lens of Jesus Christ, what are we? Sin. We are sinners. Cleansed by His love. When God sees us, we are perfect through Jesus Christ. We're no more and no less. When I look at myself, do I see Jesus in me? What is it that makes me less than I really am? And what is it that makes me more than I really am. We can say that we are everything through Jesus Christ. This holds true in our daily lives. 
Our walk with Jesus Christ will affect our daily life. When we have Jesus as a personal friend, we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How close that relationship is will show up in our walk, in everything that we do in our daily lives. I like what Roland said. I never looked at it that way. That Jesus performed all these miracles. They never questioned him about doing the, doing the miracles. He, they wanted to know, how did you do it? His close relationship with the Father. Imagine what our lives would be like when we have a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It shows up in what we do and how we are every day. It's our conduct. This is what chapter 12 is all about. Our relationship, our conduct is tied up in our love for Jesus and His love for us. Oh, we try to be good towards others and do great wonderful things for others and we see how see if there are people in the church that do the same thing and things happen. But things happen, I should say. And they don't like so-and-so. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit because apart from me you can accomplish nothing. Our wonderful works just never last when we do it without the love of Jesus Christ in us. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if someone happens to have a complaint against you, anyone else, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also forgive others. When we compare that passage with chapter 12 here, 9 through 21, they're very similar in each other in a way that they talk about our conduct towards other people. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. Help one another. Walk with each other in joy and sadness. Live in harmony with each other. Forgive one another. What is the common thread that brings these all together? That holds our conduct together with all these things that we are to do with towards others. Hmm? Our relationship with Jesus Christ. The love that He brings into our lives. All, and to all these virtues, this is in Colossians 3, and to all these virtues add love, which is the perfect bond. Love is the perfect bond. It works on all these things and holds it together. Super good. So the question is, what is love? It's just a feeling? Puppy love. It comes and goes. We as Christians look at love a little different than what the society does. We, I look at love as something that's spiritual. Society looks at it as something physical.
So what is love? According to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, love is patient, love is kind, it is not envious. Love does not brag, it is not puffed up, it is not rude, it is not self-serving, it is not easily angered or resentful, it is not glad about injustice, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. What is God? God is love. Hmm? Are prepared a choice to choose. A choice to choose. It is our choice to turn to the love of Jesus Christ. To a love that endures that lasts forever, that binds us together in hearts as a Christian family. It goes on to say that other things will stop being. The idea is that the love that stems from the love of Jesus Christ will never go away. That love that we have for the Lord Jesus Christ, that we have from Him within ourselves, will never fade. The peace that He gives us never goes away. When you don't have Jesus Christ, you're out there searching for things. This lasts for a little bit. No, it makes me feel good. I got this one now. It goes away. We find something else. When it lasts for a little bit and goes away. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we have Him inside us, it never fades. When Jesus was asked what is the greatest commandment, what was His reply? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest <coughs> commandment. Then what did he say? The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law of the prophets depend on these two commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. When you compare me loving my neighbor as myself, do I can compare it to how Jesus loves me? Jesus told us to love others as I have loved you. Love is the glue that holds together all things. How many families, how many relationships have gone by the wayside because love was not there. You may say there was love there. They were always happy with each other, or so it seemed. And yes, I would agree with that. I would agree with you, only I would ask this question. Where was the love coming from? What was their what was their love anchored in? How did you do those miracles? Was it why you did them? Or if you even did them? Our love for one another isn't about 
how we do it, or why we do it. I shouldn't say it's not how, but it is how we do it. Where does our love come from? What is it based on? Where do we draw it from? From the Lord Jesus Christ. Love one another just as I have loved you. When we forget how much Jesus Christ loves us, we'll forget to love others. This brings the question of just how did Jesus love you? He died for you and I, and then he rose again to free us from the bondage of sin. The perfect love. God is love. It is the God kind of love. It never fades. This is what is being said here in this passage. We are to practice the love that God gives us with on others no matter what. It doesn't matter what it is they, that others do to us. What they said, how they acted towards us. We are to hold our heads high and love them in return. And no, I'm not saying stick your chin out and say, I love you. It's a humble love. How did Jesus love me? He humbly went to the cross and died. But he said, I do this because I love you. If your enemy, enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. What did Jesus say when they were nailing him to the cross? Okay. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. How often have you been nailed to the cross? Did you forgive them? Did you forgive your enemies for what they said and did? It's a hard pill to swallow. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Flee from Satan. It is hard to love others in the same way that Jesus loves me. You may say, I can do that. <coughs> you can say, I forgive you. Try to treat them nicely. But my question is, do you mean it? Where is it coming from? I mean, really mean it. Is it coming from a transformed heart? A transformed mind that has been renewed through the blood of Jesus Christ? When it does, then you will have no problem. You may not need, you may not like it, but you will have no problem letting God take care of it. Yes, this is hard to do, but what helps is to talk to God. Pray without ceasing. Talk to God daily. Pour out your heart. What's on your heart and your mind? Just tell it to Him.
He tells us to bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Have you done that? Have you actually sat down and prayed earnestly for someone that curses you and despitefully uses you? If you haven't tried. That's a hard pill to swallow. God also tells <coughs> vengeance is mine. I will repay. Give room for my wrath. You will be blessed by praying for those who treat you with disdain. 1 Peter 3 9 says, Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult, but instead bless others because you were called to inherit a blessing. We're not to curse others. We're to put, ask a blessing on them. Because we are being blessed by God the Father. <clears throat> you, can dis you will discover that God can and will work in your life when you give this evil over to Him. Abhor what is evil, but cling to what is good. Take hold of Jesus Christ. And hang on for dear life. Hang on to Jesus Christ like your life depended on it. Because your eternal life does depend on it. Give room for my wrath. When you start to think about the contents of letting, on the, in the context of letting God take care of those who don't like you or treat you badly, and not only makes it that you don't need to worry about it no more, but did you stop to think that God can repay you a lot better than you can? God has more revenge than we do, than I do. What he can do, his wrath is a lot worse than my wrath. <coughs> do you really want to be standing in the way of a sinner when God gives that sinner wrath? Think about it. What does God's wrath look like? Something you don't want to see. I don't be around it. Study the Old Testament. And just look at how God took care of those that disobeyed Him. Some of the things that happened to the people that got annihilated for disobeying Him. Read Revelations. It's all about God's revenge. His wrath on the sinners that do not repent. Do you really want to stand in the way of that? The big thing is when you give it up, it takes the load off. When you allow God to take over like that, you don't have to worry about it. When you give it all to God, you get a peace. But we as humans like to hang on to it. And that gets in the way of us having a full, open relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> When you look at it this way, that 
that's because you have Jesus. We are inheriting a blessing when we have Jesus Christ. And that blessing is to be in the presence of God the Father someday. A sinner won't. You don't have that blessing. He never will. What are those who do not know Jesus as a personal friend receiving at the coming of Jesus on Judgment Day? Would you call it a blessing to be the focus of God's wrath? When you think about what sinner's reward will be, it should lead you to praying for their salvation. No matter what they say or do to you, it should lead you to praying for their salvation. This is the love of Jesus Christ. To forgive others in the same way that Jesus forgives you. If you can't, or you won't, then you have forgotten how much Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Chapter 12 is talking about the body of Christ. It talks about the gifts and things that we have. We all have a part in this family of God in the body of Christ. We have a function that's important. It doesn't matter how small or big it is. You all have importance. God gave it to you. It's important. We may think it's small. We may look at others and say, man, it's big. His his function is big. It doesn't matter what we think about it. It is important to God and that we must do it with love for each other. I'll leave you with this. Ephesians 4, verses 15 and 16, which I think ties up chapter 12 very well. Practicing the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Christ who is the head. From him the whole body grows, fitted and held together through every supporting ligament, through every supporting function of the body of Christ. Every function that we have as a part of the body of Christ. As each one does its part, the body builds itself up in love. As we each do our part as the body of Christ, our function that God has given us, with the idea of loving one another as Jesus Christ has loved us, we will build this family of God. And this all depends on our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is our secret on how we do the things we do. Of how people can look at us and ask, what is it you got? It's our love through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. The words that speak to us when we read them and listen. The indwelling Holy Spirit who is an accessory between you and us. That when we don't understand, that we don't have the words to speak that we feel, that we have within inside us, that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. 
We don't have to worry about what words to use when we speak to you. Because when we have the Holy Spirit within us, he will fill those words out for us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we as a family of God can love one another as you have loved us. And it's through this love, this perfect love, that we can be a witness to others for need of salvation, for redemption, for repentance of their sin. May we, as we go through each day in our daily walk, be a witness, not in any words, but in our actions, through our love with Jesus Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.